Actually, alive. though, he'd be probably be better than one of the Trump's kids because he can actually fight somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did, play, he did play pretty. Uh, he did play the spoiled rich kid last week pretty well, despite that's not what I wanted to play. <laughs> well, that's that's what the dice wanted you to yeah, play. The dice made me play yeah. that character. The dice made you do it. <laughs> Isn't there a teacher with that on? So I need to get that t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Level up! Now, now, now. This is the second time I've been having trouble with my YouTube channel for some reason. And I don't know why. It records it, but it doesn't uh, broadcast it live for some reason. I'm going to change one thing. Oh, when you have time, not during game time, JC, my grandson gave me a list to ask you about YouTube stuff. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, hopefully, I might be able to help. <laughs> oh. you have to, you'd have to meet Dalton. Yeah, okay. You can explain it to him. Whether he's going to grasp the explanation the way you intended it is anybody's guess. <laughs> To put it well, no, he'll get it right, but he'll put it like his whole spin on it. Told one of his friends, a friend of a friend, the other way that she he, she was not going to use him for a conduit to flirt with his best friend, and his mother's like, "Wow, well, he actually used it." Now, people don't use it that way, but he used it right. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Well, it's recording. That's the main thing right there. <laughs> to those of you who got an invite, welcome to Nerd Prime. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all Nerds International. With the hyphen. Well, that was the longest intro I ever had to go through then. Okay, hi. Hello. Okay, we're all set. We're all here. Nope. Yep. 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 <laughs> <clears throat> so let me give a brief uh, recap of what happened in the last game. Uh, all of your characters, everyone, was currently hired uh, to work as uh, members of a caravan. And the caravan was operating out of a southern eastern portion of the continent of Hyboria. And let me bring up the map so you can see it. I don't see a map, JC. Oh, well, it's coming. That, it's coming. <laughs> you need to be faster. I need to be better at it. Yeah. There's map. Oh, it's huge. Now, Iranistan is in the bottom. <laughs> is there an Iranistan? There is an Iranistan. There, Ar Ar Iranistan is in the bottom right-hand <laughs> corner. And... <laughs> mainly a vast desert. Uh, there are cities in this desert, and but this area is a fairly lawless part of the world. All right, uh, a lot of banditry. Um, you know, the cities are like, uh, you know, cities of thieves. You know, you go in there, uh, people trying to make a buck. A lot of smuggling goes on down in this area. Uh, you know, a lot of evil stuff takes place down here. 
uh, <clears throat> so you were hired uh, to run from a uh, from one of the cities uh, up to the city of Sabata, which is a little further uh, northwest of where the circle is. As you were all traveling, uh, you were getting close to a you know fairly rugged piece of country, and I'll bring up that picture. Hopefully. So it's fairly rugged country. Uh, you know, a lot of sand dunes. Uh, but this area, back before the cataclysm that struck this world, uh, there's, there was vast cities in here, big, gigantic cities. And now uh, a lot of them are buried under, underneath the sands. And the way the storms and the wind blows in here, one day you could be walking like a trail... Uh, or across the dunes, and you could see like a building sticking through the sands. And then the next day, based on the way the winds have shifted, those buildings are gone. So there's countless amount of treasures and 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 uh, and wealth buried underneath these sands. As the group was uh, was traveling, uh, they got struck by a wicked and massive sandstorm. Uh, Amala, Petrus. And Maeve, they were all uh, in one of the, uh, were operating a cart, but they lost control of the cart as the camel, uh, you know, didn't like the storm. And they actually went off the path and actually rolled down the side of a sand dune and got separated from the rest of the group. Sounds like Maeve's fault. Hey, I love the <laughs> driving thing. <laughs> So they tried to they they tried to hang it out there, uh, hold out, last out the storm, but it was getting really bad. And as the uh, cart was buried in the sand on the side of the sand dune, and the, you know, uh, Amala was trying to look after the uh, camel. Uh, <laughs> sand in the lungs. Good sound effects. Uh, you're you're alive there. You're good. Oh, but I should have this push to talk set, and it screwed me up here. <laughs> so as the uh, as they were on the side of the sand dune, and you know, trying to get the cart out and and trying to get cover, uh, the sand dune actually uh, collapsed in on itself and actually swallowed up the cart and the camel. Uh, the three characters managed to uh, quickly duck aside and get out of the way. Amala almost got sucked into the sand dune, uh, but she survived. And through the storm, they noticed uh, they were able to see some ruins, uh, you know, not that far off from where they were, they currently were. Uh, so, so as they were there, there they were able to see like a, a structure come through the blown sand. And they saw like a doorway, and they went and entered it. You know, they built cover. Uh, they decided to try to wait it out there for a night to see if the storm would settle out. Uh, but what happened? The storm kept going, and on the next morning, due to a uh, extremely amount of doom to be spent, uh, their supplies, water supplies, and food and provisions were all spoiled by the storm. Uh, Inside the structure, they noticed that there was these, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, bass reliefs. Bass, yeah, bass relief, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, were on the walls, and a lot of them uh, depicted the uh, the god of Set, uh, the god of serpents. And in one of the walls, they noticed that uh, there was an inscription there that kind of meant that to enter the temple, you gotta show your respects and enter in on your on, uh, on your show your respects to the god before you can e enter. So it was a small tunnel that the only way to go through it is if they kind of got down on their hands and knees to crawl through. So after some hemming and hawing between the group, they finally decided that 
really that's the only place they can go. They got to get some provisions and find food. So as uh, they were crawling through there, they came to a, a vast chamber that had all these columns, uh, and it was a big domed, uh, big domed uh, room, and each column had these golden snakes or brass snakes uh, circling the columns, and they were all going up, and the heads were facing each other. And because of that, uh, you know, this is the, the, where they were, and up in the up in the ceiling, they can see holes in the. Uh, in the uh, ceiling and beams of light were able to come through from outside and you can see the, the sand drifting in and you know so it was a fairly dark chamber with these beams of light uh, and sand slowly you know filling up the, the chamber and in the area there was like you know sand filled up from over the years uh, they actually found these uh, the skeleton that was in these really fine or what once was very fine robes uh, just as they were discovering this, <clears throat> uh, they heard uh, the sound of sand starting to pour in and collapse and uh, into the chamber. And when they looked up on the far side of this r huge room, they saw a figure coming through uh, an entryway. And it was a dark hooded shadowed figure and there was a slight uh, you know, glow around the eyes. And that's right where I left it off. So, how does that sound for everyone so far? Good? Sure. Fantastic. Yep. Works for me. Okay. And I get this fixed, by the way. Oh, good. Okay. So, for the other characters, which is Jika. Is that how you want to say it? Jika. 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 And Adelstan and Pet... Uh, sorry, Adelstan and Othwald. You guys were also working for the caravan. And you guys didn't notice at the time that uh, the previous cart was lost. And in this caravan, there was about probably 10 or 15 carts. It was a fairly large caravan. Uh, <clears throat> the thing about this caravan is that uh, the, lead carav the lead carts seem to be carrying, uh, have a lot more soldiers assigned to, or guards assigned to the particular carts. So it kind of showed that the, the forward carts were a lot more wealthy or more important than the ones that you were currently riding on. Uh, after uh, maybe 30 minutes uh, after the last group was lost, uh, the the leader of the caravan called to stop and noticed that you guys, you know, they lost the group. So they huddled themselves, they stopped, and they uh, took cover in a nearby ravine try to get out, out of the sandstorm and as the wind was blowing in and blowing through uh, they tried to uh, wait and to see if the, the previous or the last cart uh, of the characters would actually arrive they never did uh, it was at this time that the leader decided that it wasn't safe to continue on anymore as the storm was raging and it was really hard to see so they all kind of hunkered down for the evening uh, throughout the evening, uh, your you, your characters were assigned to watch, and during the watch, uh, something very horrible happened. For whatever reason, <clears throat> and unknown to you guys, there was uh, where is it to? A large group of cloaked figures raided the caravan. But not that they raid. They came in such vast numbers and so quickly, and they struck so so quick. They never came in to kill everyone. They started grabbing people and dragging them off into the desert, into the storm. And the place was complete chaos. You three guys realized that all was lost at the time. So you guys kind of hid and, you know, hid in the... Uh, in the nearby ravine and pretty much the whole group was was lost you notice that not long after that as you were in hiding that the, these raiders started uh, dragging off the items that were on the the lead cart and that you're not exactly sure what was in these carts but you do know that they were 
you know, dragging them off. So lost in the uh, in the desert at this point, you realize you probably thought it's probably best to find the other characters. So you start to backtrack and see if you can find out what happened to them. Afraid of you know getting swallowed up by a large band of these bandits. And as you were walking, uh, you were walking up this massively huge dune. And suddenly the ground gave away beneath you. And all three of you fell down into the dune through a, some form of structure. And, and you all fell maybe, you know, 30 feet. I'm going to have all of you uh, roll your resistance skill. Difficulty 1. So essentially what you hear, you just roll your dice. If you get more than one success, you're good. Is resistance. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I forget that. Only have to click once. Oh, that's fine. We'll take your first one. So uh, you got one success. Okay, so uh, Jaka, you get one momentum. So right, type in one on your character. There you go. You're good. Uh, Adelstan, you get one success. So put one in your momentum. And Othwald, you get one success. So you put that. So yeah. So you. Uh, Oh, wait, no, hold on, sorry. Adelstan, you do not get one momentum because you only got one. That's the same for Othwald. Because you succeeded, you managed to uh, control your slide uh, and fall uh, enough to land uh, <clears throat> in a big pile of sand. Uh, <clears throat> and for the rest of the characters, as you're in this... Uh, in this chamber, you notice that this sound and collapsing of sand was actually the roof caving in. And you see three characters, three three people fall through the ceiling and land in a pile of uh, sand and a mound of sand on the floor uh, just to your side. You recognize these three individuals as uh, members of your caravan. How's that for getting everybody into the group? <laughs> that was very good. Yeah, too bad it took too long. <laughs> <laughs> Time right. is a virtue. Time is a virtue. And I'll just give myself some doom for your compliments. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so here you guys are in this large chamber. Columns are erect. All of them have the brass or golden looking serpents wrapped around each of these columns that go up probably 20 feet. There are doors on every side. Large doors on each side of these uh, this chamber. <clears throat> and um, as you are all there, <clears throat> this figure <clears throat> strolls through the door in front of you. I'll command this figure to stop where it is. Oh. And he's going to listen to you. <laughs> he is. I have the command skill. <laughs> <laughs> this, this cloaked figure huddled over. Uh, a slight glow coming from around his face. Uh, could be reflections. You're not exactly sure. But it appears that his face is covered with a mask, like a white porcelain mask. He's huddled over, showing signs of age. He has this uh, staff, narrow-looking staff or scepter in his hands. Uh, his cloak is tattered. Uh, his hands, the only uh, part of his uh, body that actually doesn't have any clothing on it is his hands. And you can see that his hands are uh, dry and old, like, you know, like... Uh, like it's been aged. And <clears throat> he looks at you all and he's like, <clears throat> Ah, my prayers to my God have been answered. You are the ones who I've been waiting for. Somehow I doubt that. 
<laughs> Who exactly are you? <clears throat> My name is Xanath. I was once the king of this fine city. Just out of curiosity, how's that spelled, JC? Xanath? Yeah. Z A N N I E T H. Thank you. I need to write that down too. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man. So we're in these ancient ruins. Yes. Speaking to a representative of these ancient ruins. That is correct. Not just speaking to representatives, speaking to the old, to the king of these ancient ruins. <laughs> From what he, he seems, said. Who seems to have been waiting for us. Boy, is he in shit. <laughs> <laughs> and why would the he want... has probably we... lowered his expectations. Especially <laughs> 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 uh, trying to, like, I wasn't there for that. Tico wasn't there for that. She probably landed on her feet, saw the kids going, oh my god, your father's going to be so relieved. So, um, as a young noble, can I approach this king uh, kind of as a peer to try to find out a little bit more about his deal? You can certainly try, sure. Uh... <laughs> Oh, doom. I'll take the doom in this case. <laughs> so, uh, doom goes to sure 15. Man, I can roll nothing but 20s in this game. <laughs> uh, so, as you go ahead and tell me what you're going to do. So, um, I'm going to approach him and, and ask him what, why he thinks that we are... Uh, people that he has been awaiting <clears throat> for many a millennium i've been here trapped within this temple cursed to roam these hallways and it is through prayers and diligence that my god has brought you here somehow i doubt that yeah uh, tell me tell me more of this curse <clears throat> Many years ago, when I was king, a great evil came into this city and corrupted my people. <clears throat> and I tried to battle it, and we tried to rid our city of this great curse, of this great evil. And alas, I was unable to defeat it, and I was cursed during the battle to un be unable to leave these wretched halls. That evil has reawakened. The sands have been shifting, and I fear that now this evil is removing the sands to escape and to get back into the world that it once was in. It's kind of encouraging that he uses the word evil to describe evil. So maybe he's not evil. But um, could you tell us more about this great evil? What is it exactly? <clears throat> My people started worshipping a foul god. A god so vile that demands sacrifices of not just anything but of our our own kindred. It offered them power and wealth, seduced them into thinking that <clears throat> they could become great and noble and powerful individuals if they only followed the creeds set by this god. 
I tried to stop it. But again, I was only able to hold it in place. This whole city was cursed. I am all that is left now. I was doomed to watch this city drift over with sand. Be lost in the periods of over time. I am all that is left. How, how long has that been? I have lost the number. A bit of millennia or more. Um, the the god that your people started worshiping, um, did it happen to be the the god of those snakes, <clears throat> or was that your god? The god of the city was set. It was not set that cursed the city. Hey, <laughs> all right then. Hmm. Working with one evil badass to to kick the ass of another evil badass. Well, you know the enemy of my enemy and such. Yeah. <laughs> so, what guy cursed this place? <clears throat> in the final battle <clears throat> great magics were cast many lives were lost but in the end the people of the city were destroyed and I was bound inside this cursed temple only to bind this evil Asura that's A S U R A. <clears throat> to the ziggurat of the city. Now, anyone not know what a ziggurat is? Or a ziggurat? I don't know. There is such a thing as Google. A ziggurat <laughs> is similar to a pyramid. It's a step pyramid. Yeah. Is that like the uh, Mayans, I think? Yes, yeah. similar to that. Very similar. Mesopotamia. Or... Yeah, my parents were actually there and saw those rooms and took photos. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Very much, much like, very much Mayan-like. Yes. yes. Yeah. In the center of the city laid the great ziggurat. It was at this place that he replaced himself with the god of Set, where he was able to oh, rule what? from this point. We trapped him in there, but I'm af afraid that he has reawakened. What, what is the name of this city? It's a th <laughs> That's a good question. I can't remember what I called it last game. <laughs> Exantheles is what it was. Exantheles, yep. Oh. Mm. <clears throat> and I fear that his this uh, his influence and his followers may be the reason why the storm has been lasting so long. I'm afraid that he is Gathering individuals for sacrifices. Ah, uh, this 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 god has to be stopped. But how do we stop for, the god? That's another. That is a question. <laughs> good question, right there. But no matter what, he has to be stopped. Yes. Maybe we could just stop the sacrifices. I mean, surely it would take an artifact or weapon of great power to stop such a being, right? <clears throat> The great power was once <clears throat> needed, <clears throat> but the first part of our battle, I managed to weaken him so much, but I was unable to finish the last portion <clears throat> of the ritual to forever banish this creature. 
in his you chamber know? on top of the the ziggurat lays a fanged diamond a fanged diamond knife <clears throat> if i could get that to this temple and purify it it will end its reign and dispel this creature back to the hells it came from And how do we find the ziggurat from here with the storm raging about? Ah. Uh, <clears throat> it is not far from this very location. If you look, I can point you to it through the chamber doors. This great city. <clears throat> and he walks over to, uh, to the side door to the right, to the eastern door. <clears throat> and he opens it up. And you notice that he uh, he can only go as far as the threshold. He can't cross it. <clears throat> he opens up the door, and out through the door you see this. Uh, oh, I'll have to uh, give myself some more doom because I'm being so slow. <laughs> out through the door you can see the winds blowing and the sand and the sand is the, the dunes are now slowly pushing itself off and these old buildings and the ziggurat can be seen off into the, the distance uh, he says you must travel to the ziggurat up there it is up there on the top chamber you will find the the item that we seek. Wow, we got a cigarette and an obelisk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Both are bad. Um, <laughs> so, just question: um, How many followers? Uh, do, do we know how many followers of set there are? I suppose not. The followers no, that. of set. No, yeah. it's Asura. It's Asura. Is the one. That... Oh, yeah given us the problem here and I mean yeah how many other than having to like actually deal with a god which is going to be like entertaining enough what else is in there I cannot say for certain but I can tell that you that his powers of growing he has as you can see on the chamber floors some of the bodies of people who have fell through this same area that you fell through. And he points to the robe figure in the uh, laying in the dust you guys uh, noticed earlier. <clears throat> oh, yeah. They all report, report it over time that they were raided and their people were dragged off into the sand. And I'm afraid that they are collecting the members of the nearby caravan route and the trading routes is almost as if he is searching for something whether for items or people i am unsure or salt. it sounds like to me more of a set more people to give to sacrifice mm -hmm. because he's taking people right from the caravans before the before i and the other two of us managed to get away from it we we had watched it happen, and there's nothing we could have done except let it happen. But I do not think, <clears throat> I feel that the fact that you are all here, he is not expecting anyone to make their way to the chamber I fear I, I think that surprise is on our side ah uh, he's expecting those on the caravan to have already been taken away no well, actually be able to survive sounds like arrogance is on our side too 
Well, there is that, but I have another concern. And I hear I'm going to look at the others because we haven't really had a chance to look at. I don't know about the rest of you, but in the storm and the, and the tumult, I've pretty much lost all my weapons and equipment. What are we going to fight this with our, our bare hands? Well, I will need food as well. Yeah, let's ask the old king if he's got anything to help us on our uh, on this request that he's making from us. I'm afraid. I say, uh, good man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that I am unable to give you much more than the information and the knowledge you need to rid of this evil. I can tell you that it bleeds, and if it bleeds, it can die. Mm. And is at such a weakened state through the uh, previous ritual. Solid steel should be enough to end it. But if you follow the path to the ziggurat, through the ruins, I'm sure that there will be items that you can find. Many great soldiers and warriors died that day. In fact, they all died that day. So you're saying you don't mind we if we loot your ruined city as we go? <laughs> This city is no more. In fact, that once this curse has been removed, I will no longer be here. But I must yes. stop it. I must stop this evil. Finish this well, fight that we started. This is the it, first time I've ever been invited to loot a city. <laughs> well, by the king, no less. Here, yeah. have it. It's yours. Just get me out of here. It must, this is so desperate for him to allow us to do some, to desecrate something that has happened here. Um, but, there are, just, just to let you know, there are rubies as big as dinner plates in the bass reliefs in other portions of the city, and we have seen them. Well, yeah, well before, but... before we can address that, because the other thing that has caught my attention here as as uh, Adelstein has said that uh, we saw the others taken and we were unable to stop it, but there's the possibility that they're yet alive and prisoners within the city, and that I don't know about the rest of you, but I was hired not only to drive but to protect the caravan, and if there's a chance of saving our companions and our employer curse or no curse god or no god I'm slightly more mercenary about the whole thing than you are um, they're pretty much good as dead I don't mind looting the city no um and we should perhaps go back and see if we miss anything, but if we can. But I would, I would avoid the really big um, blatant gems just because they're a little too big and blatant. If there's people that are still alive, I would rather get them out safely than to let them sit there and rot. I mean, we can check, I guess, on the way out. Well, I, as I said, I don't know for the rest of you who were separated from the rest of us, but I've lost everything, so the sooner we be about this. All I have on me is the clothes I'm wearing and my bow and, and some arrows. That's it. I lost everything else. So with no water, no food, and no weapons, every second we waste... I'm going to make death. everyone roll a D1 uh, awareness. I got to see what the skill is. Observation roll. Uh-oh. Oh, look at the doom. Oh, no. Oh, oh, man. Freaking 20s. That's not even possible. <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, let me do this right. Othwald? 
you get two uh, momentum. Adelstan. Oh, twice there, so just make sure you pick the right one. I just looking at this. Yeah, I'm looking at the first one. Yeah. So you get two momentum. Uh, Petrus, you get none. <laughs> Adelstan, you get two momentum. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, Petrus. Yeah, yeah. You get Petrus gets none. Uh, <clears throat> Maeve, you don't get any, and obviously uh, Jaka, Jika doesn't get any. Jika, Jika. Uh, <clears throat> all of a sudden, you hear like a. You notice as well. Everyone was talking. Amala was, you know, who was kind of the group thief, I guess you can say. She was kind of roaming around, uh, looking, sizing things up. And she uh, briefly stepped outside the door <clears throat> uh, towards the east door, uh, kind of looking around. And you hear like a scuffle, and you hear like a, like a very brief scuffle. And then everything goes quiet. As okay, if... I'm going right where she was and trying to look around. <clears throat> As you... Uh... Are you just going to walk right outside the door? What's everyone else doing? I'm walking right towards the edge of the door, looking out. I'm just giving the door a steely glare. See, now, <laughs> the, 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 I, yeah, Jika's going to move up to the door kind of quietly just to let the others throw themselves out there. I will draw my bow and, and try and quietly move towards the door, but not past the threshold. Okay, so as uh, everyone uh, kind of looks at the ones that are looking outside the door, you can see the the tracks of, uh, you know, through the blown sand. Um, Amala steps, and she only stepped probably six or seven feet to the side of the door, according to the tracks. And then in the sand dune, you can see like a uh, like a body print or like a like something hit the side of the sand dune. That's right there, and that's it. There's no sign or track of her whatsoever. Where did... What? Where could she have gone? Well, somebody else is in here besides us, obviously. I recommend on staying on high alert for anybody else that we don't know at this moment. Yep, red alert. If all we're saying is the, the body print and no footprints... It's not other bodies that we don't know I'm on high alert for. Uh, the Zinth... <laughs> refer to notebook. Uh, <laughs> Xanath curses under his breath. This Azra and his minions has captured yet another one. They lurk in these ruins. Another one to be fed to the the evil. What exactly are the minions that they can move through sand effortlessly like that? Many great evils, <clears throat> unknown to you and unknown to me, lurk these realms. This realm strength is getting stronger. Please, for your friend's sake, travel and retrieve that artifact. We may have time yet to save your friend. Great. So now we have an incentive. Well, we have incentive anyway. We may have the rest of the caravan there, too. I don't know what you, but I like getting paid. Um... And I'm going to go ahead and set out. If we can see it, then I'm just... Great. I'm not seeing we have too many choices here. <laughs> no, no, I don't we... either. So, uh, seeing what's seeing all this do? sand Maybe out this there. this guy will have water somewhere. <laughs> Seeing all the sand whipping about, 
I'm going to put something over my over the mouth and nose to keep some of the sand from going in. Okay. Well, I don't know if we all have anything like that, but if I have it, I would use it. Oh, yeah. I would just use any, oh, any oh, the, bit of cloth. It, it, we're traveling in the desert. We were all garbed that way. It's kind of the way you we would have, and, Yeah, something, I would assume. That's standard gear in the desert. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put it on there so I, so it doesn't get in my mouth. And... I don't suppose anyone has a crate if water you're spell. If you're, traveling, <laughs> if you're wearing anything else in the desert and you're traveling with people who know the desert, they did it. How about the Create Oasis spell? I would take that. <laughs> oh, such minor spells don't exist in Sword and Sorcery. Oh, yeah, we should have asked the uh, his that he did for water. Well, we did uh, technically ask him, but he didn't really re reply. Yeah, he said he had nothing that could help us but advice and words. Right. Well, didn't help my thirst in the least. I'm marching on. Are, are there any yes. cacti um, in this desert? Because cacti have juice sometimes. Oh, Jika is Hyrcanian, so she's kind of like this little stoic, that Mongolian, not exactly, somewhere in there, just, and she'll just march right along. No cacti in the way that we can chop open. Uh, <clears throat> currently, all you can see right now is sand dunes and a few... Uh, ruined structures uh, poking out through the uh, through the buildings. Uh, you can see the ziggurat off in the distance. Uh, Adel Adelstan is not going to let Jika off without someone with her. He's going to be following right next, right with her, right away. All right then. Being the night type he is, he would have made sure she, even pairs are better than by yourself. And Chica will not look right or left or care that he's following her along. She's just going to march right along because where she comes from, men, women, knights, what the hell, everybody does their part. Oh, I just... I just got a message from uh, Jonathan saying that uh, he had his times mixed up. Lovely. Just one second there now. Well, things went to hell in a handbasket in a hurry. <laughs> oh, they went in a hell in a handbasket last week here, you know. Yeah, we lost the freaking caravan. Yeah, that was fun. And their food. <laughs> this was a much quicker way into the temple this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as you uh, are traveling uh, or walking the trail, the sand is blowing. You You have this sense of uh dread and eeriness uh you know surround you i'm going to make everyone make a difficulty two discipline check to keep your your nerve what and i can I spend a momentum to add a dice to that <clears throat> okay now this is something that i've just learned and that we were doing it wrong if you want to add dice to your skill roll, you, it's called immediate an immediate momentum. And to use that, you either have to spend it from the party pool, or you have to buy it with Doom. Now, is the Y2 part the difficulty? Yes. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So we can't use our own momentum, then what does momentum do for us? Momentum is like there's instant momentum and there's other momentum. Uh you can use it after, like anything that's used to increase a skill roll beforehand. Um, because it's... Hold on, though. Uh, I know what you mean. i got to change the scene. This is a new scene. So everyone's personal momentum now goes back to, I, goes back to zero. 
And so the momentum I had has to go to the pool now? Yeah, all the momentum now goes into the pool, up to a maximum of six. Yeah, everybody okay. had... Where do I find the pool? The pool's yeah. in that doom, the doom picture. I'll bring the chart right there. I just dropped mine into the... No, I didn't know how to add it directly to the Doom pile. No, okay, I, I can well, only I only I can add it to the Doom pile. Well, I just dropped mine the, from my to the window. So. Yep. Okay, well I got a twenty, so I suck. Oh, I'll take that. <laughs> now, so, what did we need to roll here? <clears throat> okay, so the way it works now, if you want to use it to increase your dice, your skill dice, you can either spend it from the pool, or you can give me Doom to do it. And which skill was it that we needed to roll here? It is your discipline, your willpower. At a difficulty two? Difficulty two, yep. Then I'm going to spend the doom to add dice. Now, is that the plus one modifier or add the yes, dice modifier? Yes, the plus, mo one, plus one modifier. Yeah, don't. <laughs> you, know, you used the wrong one there, no? Hold on, I'll change that again. Didn't I have to collect my doom here? And no, no, because you're you're using your doom from the doom pool. Oh, okay. So I'll look after that. <clears throat> okay. Well, you take care of that, and then I add the plus one in the modifier. Yep. And just. Oops! Don't worry. Twice by mistake. The first one counts. Ooh. You need to roll. No, the first, the second one is the one that counts because it's got the. Uh... Um, it's got the extra yeah. dice in it. Okay, so I'll go through and add everything up here. Uh, May, you got you, you got a success, but you also got me a doom. That's good. Petrus, you got me a doom. <laughs> <clears throat> you also got a su success. Othwald, you got two moment two successes, so you get actually you got, got three successes. Three so you, successes. Yeah, so you get three you momentum die. or two momentum. Sorry, two momentum. <clears throat> So let me let me ask you. I have a question about my game mechanics. Okay. Again. Um, I have the command skill. Right. So in that scenario, not that I plan on doing this, but for an instance, could I have made my roll and got a success, and then made uh, a command for people to hold tight, like some sort of inspirational command to the party, and then made a command roll, and then put any of success into the pool. Uh, let me have a look-see. Command. Because I have the exact same skill myself. I also have command. When making a command test, Petrus can re-roll... Uh, that's more for uh, controlling, say, NPCs. But I'm or write... people that are below my social status. Yes. NPC. I'm going to read that in there now. Because uh, I don't know the answer to that one offhand. Okay. Alright, like I said, it was something I was thinking about. I didn't know if it was used in that manner or not. We'll find out here now. Because other other uses are bolstering subordinates in the face of horror or disaster, conveying orders and objectives clearly with correct emphasis, as well as commanding non NPCs. Yes, yeah, it may also be added to the momentum pool to help those subordinates carry out the orders given. So, are you saying that these are all your subordinates? Uh, socially, because I'm a noble, that's how I was reading that. Uh... Although they may not see that, right? Actually, uh. I could see it. Uh, Adel Adelstan would see it as he also is social type character with a good social standing. And what? Try, be, what? What? That, what? That, and that's why I'm asking you, JC, because I don't know how you read that rule, and I don't know if I'm using that in the correct way. Uh, okay, so momentum spends. Uh, <clears throat> momentum can be spent to communicate additional orders. Uh, it may also be added to the momentum pool to help those subordinates carry out the orders given. 
So, so my, my initial thought on that was like, as a noble, I would have had like some, uh, some warfare training with how to use weapons, for example. So if somebody in my party was fighting someone, I may, uh, I may observe how they're fighting and give them a command to, uh, to improve their fighting skill with what they have. Right. right. That's, that's kind of how I see in that. And the same thing with, um, uh, like in this case, if, if I was successful, like with a, uh, a discipline role, because discipline is kind of like a military t- kind of thing, you can kind of like uh, tell your your people around you to kind of like dig in. Just uh, one as second. A Hold as, on. a, as a leadership skill. Yep. Yeah, just one second. Unless I'm creating a problem, I'm not trying to create a problem with people's characters. I just, that's kind of how I see it, though. They may not do that. Daniel, your social status means absolutely nothing to me. Right. Just so you know. But yeah, <laughs> and, and I totally get that because I'm I'm a young kid. I'm like 17 or something. So yeah, but, and last but, week we it's... discovered that you can't even light your own torch. We're pretty sure. <laughs> well, and and, had to... and Maeve isn't uh, from your region technically, so she would. How, like, uh, however, okay. that would also be skewed by if he were in fact the owner's. Of the caravan's son, that's part of it, and and <laughs> command is ca- command is kind of a social as like a social structure kind of goes uh, throughout cultures, right? Like you you can choose whether you listen to me or not, and that's fine. Like that's how I would see that is whether you want to accept that. But if you accepted that in one instance, um, then it would be like kind of like canon. But if you turned it down, that would be canon too. And and all I'm really trying to do is is add momentum to our pool that we can use. Well, uh, it, it would be like, for example, okay, in real life, I don't know, let's say Donald Trump bans something stupid that everybody does, and everybody has a choice whether or not to do what he says or not, well, uh, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah you can, you can command. In, but... in the same instance, if he was in the same room as you and he asked you to do something, would you would you still it, it have the same what, attitude? It, it would depend on what it was exactly. and whether or not it was logical to if do you it. Did, if you told us to jump off the top of the ziggurat, we'd probably, you know, ignore you. Exactly. Yeah. Well, in fact, we I would not ignore you. We'd probably pick you up and throw you off the top of the ziggurat. Exactly. So, you know, it would be depending on the situation, the heat of the moment. But in this context, if you were, in fact, the son of the caravan owner, that would give you some sense of why you could boss the rest of us around. Right, but I'm not, you're not compelled to do anything that I'm saying. I can command you. No, because you're not, you're not a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, some of us watch TV shows. I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm going to say that, yeah, you can say that you're commanding, but you don't get the benefits because all the rules relate to NPCs in everything that I'm reading here, it's all, it's, it's all related to the NPCs. Now, is there a skill I could use to inspire someone to keep going without commanding, but sort of keep up the morale type deal? Uh, there are talents, but nobody has them. Okay, I figured I'd ask. So, yeah, you can, like, that is mainly for uh, your... It would work, say, for like dealing with courage. Like, say, if you're you're getting they're getting scared, you can use this talent to make it hard, easier for them to recover, perhaps, or you know, like morale to to protect themselves from from fear. Okay. All right. Well, Neil said say we're gonna we're marching on up, yeah. and if I happen to find weapons as I go, I'm gonna grab them. And try to get to as many of the of our party members with the weapons as possible. <clears throat> as uh, <clears throat> so, as you guys were, uh, everyone here got a success, which is good. So that foreboding and feeling that you're getting as you're walking through the desert, or through the now the desert or the uh, sandy streets, <clears throat> more and more buildings are uh, 
becoming visible as the sand dunes are blowing out of the city and away, you know, off the buildings and stuff. Clearing, almost as if clearing away for you towards the, the ziggurat. Uh, everyone make a D1 observation roll. Um, how do make a D1 roll? You just roll it. Yeah, just roll it. You just that's what you got to beat is a one, or what get get one success. Holy crap! <laughs> okay, Othwald, you got one success. Uh, Petrus, what did you roll then? You got a twelve. Oh, I was re-rolling my observation. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. Uh, so you got one success. Everyone got one success except for Adelstan. No, oh, Adelstan got one too. Sorry. It shows oh, zero on it. No, sorry, I was looking at the wrong line. Okay, <clears throat> so as you're walking closer, uh, you all hear, except for Adelstan, the sound of rattling and slithering. You're walking down a like a, uh, now a dusty street, buildings on both sides, empty for hundreds and maybe thousands of years, all the colors and paint scoured off by the sands over time. You're now starting to hear rattling noises. Well, great. <clears throat> you notice that on the buildings, you see... It looks like ropes or coils of ropes, large ropes, slither, slithering <clears throat> on top of the buildings and through doorways. You realize everywhere you look, you're surrounded by snakes. Uh, Do they look friendly? This brings to mind Indiana Jones again. <laughs> I'm, not, yeah. I'm not even picturing this in my mind, so you know, we'll just like... I have my whip in hand. If any of them come near me, I'm slashing at them. You know the pit in Indiana Jones. <laughs> I know. I say I've never seen the movie. I will never see the movie. That's like one of the most go, famous go. quotes in movie dumb. I know it's one of the most famous quotes. I know the quote. Never seen the movie. Well, that's an awesome movie, except for the snakes. <clears throat> After some time, you've uh, are, so you're now on the street. You're you're probably halfway to the uh, to the base of the ziggurat. Uh, you realize that these snakes seem to be staying off to the side of you. There's some fairly big ones there, ten, fifteen feet long, maybe, uh, slithering around, constantly watching you. Uh, are you going to continue walking to the base of the ziggurat, or are you going to? Well, if I, if I remember what the what the king was telling us, that Set was the original god of the city, and it wasn't, and it's, but it's Asura that took over the city, literally. So it would be in Set's interest to aid whoever is going to try to defeat Asura. So if these snakes are minions of Set, they're probably not a threat to us, and I'm not going to look at them. I'm just going to keep walking. <laughs> Ew. Well, Set, Set was the, uh, how shall I put this, the not-so-evil evil god? He's the, the one that of, was... The lesser of two evils. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to put it, the lesser of two evils. To put it evil. this way, in, uh, in the Conan world, uh, there's no such thing as a benevolent god. <laughs> He is the voter's choice god. <laughs> which which god in which world is there gods that are benevolent? I'm thinking about the Greek gods going, yeah, those were a bunch of sweethearts. <laughs> Depends on who they talk to, but yeah. <clears throat> Just don't piss them off. They were great until you pissed them off. <laughs> As I'm not seeing any of this, I'm just keeping on walking. I think most, I most no deities would be fine as long as you gave them the required sacrifices and whatever. Yeah, let's toss some Petrus. 
<laughs> so are you going to continue onwards or you want to look like look around the city or whatever no oh. there's snakes on either side of us and they're escorting us and i'm content to just go where the still well some of you guys need weapons right but you're not going to find the weapons true. on the street just saying true we could do a kind of a cursory search for weapons once we're in the city and see indications of where the battle was and um i'm thinking we're, we're in the city we're probably oh, yeah. not going to find um much food or water in the streets either again just saying well we're on the outskirts of the city though technically right well you're walking no you're halfway through you're walking through the 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 city streets now uh <clears throat> Not all the city is uh, available yet because of the sand is still, you know, clearing itself. But it seems to be that the the pathway to the base of the ziggurat is actually clearing up on its own. Now, looking around, looking around, do we see that some of these buildings that, as the sand is being blown, blown away, that there's being given access to buildings or... Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, who wants to lead the way on searching? I will. I'm going to go. I'm searching for more weapons as it is. I'm going to try to help find excess of weapons for everyone else, too. <clears throat> I'll go behind them. Yeah, I'm, I'll, go, I'll go as well. <laughs> so the three of you guys are kind of... Uh, I guess you're all going, I guess, really, eh? Were you, oh, yeah. You know? We're not, we're not going to all split up here. This is a creepy place, and the snakes are watching. And Petrus is not too bright. <laughs> <laughs> is this in for like a 10? <laughs> yeah, Amala isn't with us. It was Amala that was, you know... Although I'm sure if you've been traveling with the caravan for a while, everybody's on to you by now, kid. <laughs> he's, he covers up his intelligence by saying he's just curious, but really he'll do anything. He covers up his <laughs> You had the first half of that right. He covers up his intelligence. If this was D and D, it would be below a ten. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so uh, I'm gonna have this rule as as a everyone's kind of looking. So I'm gonna. I want you guys to nominate your best searcher, and I'm gonna get everyone else to help that one particular person. What skill is searching? Observation. It would be observation. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so my observation is lower than my intelligence. <laughs> my observation is eleven. <laughs> oh boy. Thirteen. <laughs> Looks thief. like Othwald may be the one. <laughs> Othwald, the thief. Yeah, yeah, he's got thirteen. He's got to spot it. I'm not a thief. Usually, we're right behind you. Actually, I still have my whip, so I'll, I got your back, guy. Okay, mm. so I Wait guess from the looks mm. of it, is Othwald. <laughs> and the rest of us are backing him up. Okay, got so the, back. the way this works, uh, everyone's got to put a minus one modifier into the box and roll your observation roll. Including me? No, you you, you, uh, you don't do anything yet. Oh, oh I'm going to re-roll that, JC. I'm <laughs> <observant>. <laughs> Lots of 20s. I re-rolled my 20. <laughs> All right. So, uh, <clears throat> Jika got su success. Adelstan did not. I Maeve did not. not. Okay. <clears throat> so, we got one success so far. Uh, now, it's up to... Othwald to do a regular observation check and he can buy extra dice from the from the pool or for Doom. <clears throat> and you get to add that one success to whatever you roll. This is a difficulty three to search for something useful. 
So I need two more successes. You need at least two more successes, yep. All right. So if um, you want to buy it from the pool, just let me know. I've got two of my own momentum, so... No, no, they uh, all went... Sorry, they all no, went into no. the pool. No, no, we. I got... There was another... After we started the new scene, you gave us... There was another check, and I got two successes on there. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but you got to use it from the pool. For... To add to your dice skill, to add the uh, dice, you got to uh, use it from the pool. Okay. Yeah. Or you can spend Doom to do it. You know what? I'll take... You already got 19 Doom. You don't need any more. Hey, he's got a point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got a pretty decent chance at this. But uh, I'm going to use two of the, any momentum we have now at the end of the scene goes in the pool, right? That's correct, yep. To a maximum of six. That's right. All right. If I don't need to use any of my momentum, it'll go back. That's right. So, whoops. Why did that do that? <laughs> no, I was trying to drag it and add two dice. Oh no! To add dice, you got to uh, type it into the modifier. I, why'd you do that to me? So, how many uh, momentum are you going to use from the pool? Two. Two. Okay. Yep. So, here we go. Eat that! <laughs> wow! <Whoa. look> at that. <laughs> so you got a total of six successes. So you've gained three momentum total to your own. And I am going to, <clears throat> after searching around uh, for some time, I'm actually going to spend some Doom here myself. I'm going to spend two Doom. Ooh, and I'll bring in the better. effects of that now shortly. <laughs> uh, you find yourself a, uh, what looks to be like a uh, part of a, a gated entrance uh, in a wall through a street, possibly like a, a gatehouse or a guardhouse to allow you to enter into the inner section of the city. It's a gated community. And in there, <clears throat> you find an assortment of uh, items. You find, and I quote, <laughs> nothing because I spent Doom to get rid of it all. Oh. <laughs> no, you find... <laughs> And I'll be generous here. A burnt candle. <laughs> <laughs> A blue candle. <laughs> uh, let's see, here we go. You find yourselves uh, two typical, uh, you know, somewhat rusty, worn, but actually in, still in fairly good condition based on the centuries that it's been laying there, apparently. Uh, remarkably well, actually. And you, what it is, you find two sabers. And you find one small shield and you find one spear so I will drag those items over to the here
So you find two sabers. A, sp a spear. And the shield. Where's the shields too? Small shield. To my companions, I would like to take the spear. Unless somebody else would like the spear. I have no need for the spear. I could have more use for the saber. With either the sh and the shield. Possibly the shield. More so for me. Are there any objections? No, go ahead. Nope. Um, Niv, of your weapons, what have you still got? And what did you lose in the storm? That's a good question. Okay, what did we lose in the storm for some of us? Pretty much, if you had like any like uh, animals or uh, bigger equipment, that would have been lost. Um, I'm relatively lenient, so if you were like a, an adventurer, if you had like your sword and shield shield on you, on your character, like all the pregens, or sorry, I guess you wouldn't know which ones are the pregens. Uh, you got all your weapons that are already listed. Uh, if you have any of the special items from say when you made your character, such as horses or carts or whatever. Then they're back at the where the camp was. Okay, so I do have my large shield and broad sword. Yes. Oh, yeah. You got whatever equipment's listed on you. Yep. Okay, I'm making sure. <laughs> yeah, like I have my bow and arrows, but nothing else. Yeah. D does anyone need the spear? No, I do not. No. Um. That's what uh, Jika's waiting to see if everybody else is armed. Otherwise, she needs a saber. She needs a. Cutting my Jika, I have my broadsword and my large shield. I am good. And I also have a crossbow. And, and but I, um, I'm good. I don't need any of that stuff. Uh, I, I'm only concerned about the saber. I still got my whip, but that won't. Oh, no. but you have a whip. That's awesome. You can be like Indiana Jones. Well, you know me, <laughs> Emily. All my characters have whips. Does that say something about you? <laughs> well, the, well, no, it. But the, maybe the six-foot braided leather bull whip I have sitting behind me, Mike. Okay, let's move right along here, guys. I just think whips are legal weapons in my country. You know, you can carry them. You can even carry them in a courthouse. That's true. That I didn't know. Okay, so as... Actually, i got to spend four to do what I just did. So as you're in searching, and I remove two more doom, <clears throat> suddenly, the winds whip up strongly. <clears throat> And the sand is scouring down through the buildings and through the streets itself. And as you're searching, everyone make a, res a resistance, a challenging resistance check. So a D2 resistance check. Uh oh. So uh -oh. how do I add D2? Plus no, e no, it's just you got to get at least two successes. I didn't. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, at no. least I didn't get a 20. I did. Oh, I look at frequent. This. I frequently roll 20s in this game. Oh, so oh. At least there's no... But the good thing here, if I roll 20s, there's no kids around to accidentally get caught in the crossfire. Well... Except maybe Petrus. Petrus is fine. He's actually, uh, you know, I guess he wasn't going to be in the uh, caught in the uh, open elements as much as everybody else was. Uh, you know, he's, he's got a little umbrella over his head, keeping the sun off his head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it looks like Adelstan, Maeve, and Jika are hit by a massive gust of wind, and you can feel the sand scouring against your uh, your flesh. You all suffer damage, and this damage is and will be 
one, two, three, four, five, five damage against your vigor. So if you have armor, you re subtract the soak from your armor, and the rest goes on to your vigor. So it's oh, minus. So it'd be minus four from vigor. Yes. Now is my armor male three? Is do I only have one soak on it? No, you have like a, you got male three, which means you can you absorb three of the damage, so you only take two. Oh, wait, I, I have armor of Regine, so I so so I only take um, two as well. Or that's right. Yeah, whatever that soak number is there next to your armor, that's what you subtract from the damage. How much damage was it, JC? It was five. Five. five so two minus, damage. Minus. <laughs> See, that wasn't updated on the sheet at all on my side. It still had one on it. Okay, that's fine. Armor mail three, yep. Yeah. So that stays the three there. There you go. So God damn wind. Oh, it's annoying. Yeah. This this type of wind doesn't seem natural to you. No, this, this wind isn't annoying. These winds will kill you. They will strip the flesh from your bones while you're still alive. So we think it's like a magic spell somebody summoned or something? Well, the sand will do that even without magic. True. No, it's the, the god inside that doesn't like us. Well, we need to get undercover. That's all of them. <laughs> but the best yeah. thing to do is to get inside the ziggurat where the stand isn't going to rip us to ribbons. Well, I guess once we have the weapons we need, we need to march ourselves up to that ziggurat and get in and take out and find what we need. Lead the way. We're right behind you. <laughs> uh, he'll do it. I know we're we're right behind you. I'm saying. Yeah, we're, we're right following. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so uh... I have basically my shield in front of me for anything else. Also to keep sort of dis uh, di redirect the wind, the sands into a, off the shield and above. So as you uh, you're you're walking head along into the storm and you're walking down the streets with your now. Uh, ancient artifact type items of, of uh, weapons and you're you can feel the the sand scraping off your skin and, and you know it's getting into your teeth it's hard to see uh that sense of dread is is attacking everyone again it's getting back starting to play more on your mind uh everyone make a d2 discipline check or suffer mental troubles mental issues You know, I resemble that remark. Uh, so, <laughs> what is it? I get one dice, one roll too high, and it's just above the difficulty. So, was... Adelstan failed, Jika failed, Petrus failed. I failed. I only got one success. May well, failed. So... And Othwell failed. So, y'all failed. So, you all take 2d6 mental damage now. So that is two damage, and if you have courage, you subtract your courage number from that. Everything else goes on to your resolve. Oh, so you roll the damage. I roll the damage. Wait, now what was that again? Repeat it for me one more time. Okay, so <clears throat> this is based on your courage now. So courage works the same as armor. So if you have a courage number, you subtract that number from the damage, and then the rest of the damage goes to your resolve. So how does your resolve is zero? Like you panic and run away, or what? Well, once you get down to zero, it'll start affecting you like deep, more deeply mentally, and you take trauma damage. And once you get five trauma, you start to uh, you pretty much collapse from like coma or shock, or you become no useless to everyone. Okay, so now what was the total on there? The total was two damage. Two damage. Off of resolve. Uh, how do you regain resolve? You have to have a long rest, or what? It doesn't take long. You just got to have a little bit of a rest. Uh, yep. Lucky enough, I have two courage. Well, there you go. It doesn't bother you. Ha! <laughs> ha! You think that's the best you can do? Yeah. 
<laughs> well, that's easy. That's powder made from the the uh, the crushed bodies of babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, um, you can find it. In the... <laughs> it's this rich, ritual I learned about in the Temple of Set. Yeah, you can find <laughs> that in most temples in this setting. I'm sure you can. <laughs> I don't want any part of it. <laughs> so as you uh, you struggle through this, you f you feel more of this dread and this sense of airiness, and you're now reached the base of the the ziggurat. Uh, everyone, tell me what your momentum is, and I will add that to the pool. This is now a new scene. Um, it's six. Your momentum is six. Yeah, I'm using the. Well, she still had it from last from last week. She didn't realize she had to at the end of each scene had to turn it on in. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, then I guess zero. Uh, um, Petrus, you don't have any. Othwald, you got five. <laughs> so that brings you're now down to zero. That brings the pool back up to max. Everyone else can go to zero, no? Oh, so this is a new scene. Yeah. Yeah. Does this help I resolve any? Oh, it does. It does. Your resolve has gone back to uh, goes back to normal. Ah, very good. What about Does vigor? my vigor go back to normal? Your vigor goes back to normal too. Because vigor wow. is, is not necessarily wounds. It's just like you know, you're tired, you're fatigued, all that stuff. So once your once your vigor gets down to zero, bad things start to happen. Now the adrenaline's pumping, guys. Yeah, we're getting closer to the center, so the vigor's back. Wait Basically, till the adrenaline crash, though. I have the look of I'm going to find what we're going for and I don't care how we do it. We got to do it. As <laughs> with the courage of zero because you got no morale, moral, not morales. You got no uh, you got no morale right now, right? You can have like totem stuff that adds up to stuff, right? Oh, okay, so we can find those friends. throughout. Okay. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, apparently I'm a scaredy cat. So you've now reached the base of the, the ziggurat. <clears throat> and you now start your long climb. As you're That's walking up, good. the sand is still blowing. Uh, I'm going to make everyone make another uh, D2 challenging or sorry, D2 resistance roll to resist the wind. Great. Oh, I see. I, I don't resist anything. Oops. I'll take another. I am dude. malleable. Resistance is futile. <laughs> I take off like a kite. We are assimilated by the wind. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I roll tonight. I'm not going to have a great night rolling. The winds buff it against you. This is the rule system that you don't want a 20 at this point. <laughs> Unlike others. This is the system you don't want a 20 at any point. Yeah. 20 Every is like a 1. Everybody suffers. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 oh. vigor damage. So, of course, reduce oh. your soak and take your vigor. I have been buffeted by the wind. And that cost me four to do that. Oh. See, Jika's not on horseback. She has to walk and fight the wind. Jeez. Well, this is nasty wind. Again, it doesn't quite feel right. It feels evil. This is an unnatural wind. Yes. You've now reached the top of the ziggurat. The gateway or the, the entranceway is clearer in front of you. Do you all <laughs> want to uh, walk in? Not really, but we don't have much of a choice. Yeah. Um, we we do it, no matter what. We go and get that Claude Diamond thingy, whatever, go with this Asura God. Thing oh, I, I am going to mosey. <laughs> Yeah, and and we're all been like in this parching, drying, moisture sucking 
sandstorm and we've had no water. So now we're starting to get a bit cranky, too. Yeah, we're thirsty and cranky and hungry. So the first guy that crosses my path and denies me water is so finished. <laughs> yeah, I'm not making any sacrifices to that god willingly. I'll drink his blood. It's liquid, right? Technically, yes. And well, I then we need to go find something to kill because I'm getting thirsty. I, I I have read that people in um, like desert lands did actually survive that way, but it was more animal blood. blood. For some reason, it won't let me draw my grid. Yeah, my gaze is on the lookout for anything that would come uh, come across our path that would have stopped us. <clears throat> well, how many days has it been? Because we can only go three days without water, right? This is we're day two. Been. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're starting to get really cranky now. At least in real life, we can only go three days without water. I don't know about this game, but... Maybe the way water inside this temple of some sort. Oh. There, you never know. If nothing else, like some sort of holy fountain type thing. Um... I just think that I go thirst would suck. Hey, is that water? I'm going to drag you all to the uh, map here. For whatever reason, my grid is not working for some reason, so we'll have to do it this way. You guys, can, you guys can place yourselves anywhere you want within the first two squares of that. Uh... Uh, it's so loading for me. Okay. There we go. Yeah, are those fools of water or what are they? They're marble floors. Oh. And even the blue? It, it's even the, the mirage blue. effect. Yeah. Man, <laughs> all this desert, we're starting to see things that aren't there. <laughs> oh, darn it. I was hoping that was water. Okay. As you okay, so is everyone where they want to be? Yeah, I am. Not really, but sure. Okay. So, uh, just to let everybody know, each uh, for this particular case, uh, each grid. I wish I could draw a grid. Out. This is going to kind of be a little difficult. Every four, every two squares is going to be one zone. So, uh, a two square oh. by two square is one zone. Just oh, like, do you just... mean do you mean the floor squares? Yeah. <sighs> okay, I understand what he's saying. It's, we'll put it this way. Uh, we'll break it up in, into. Uh, how's the best way for me to handle this? Uh, yeah, well, we'll deal with it now shortly. Anyway, <clears throat> as you walk in through the door, that's uh, his own. Yeah, we can do it that way. Yeah, that's his own. That's a good idea, actually. As we, uh, as you guys walk in through the door, you come into the top of the, the ziggurat. Uh, you can see symbols of uh, um, various symbols around you. Uh, the light is, is fairly bright. The sun seems to be uh, coming in. Uh, you're above the dust clouds, and the wind seems to settle down. And in front of you, on the far side, and I will draw a little something there. I'll do it this way. On the top, directly across from you, you see a a large, uh, what looks to be a box. 
uh, a stone box, a st- uh, almost like a um, an ossuary where they keep bones. <clears throat> and it's roughly five to six feet hi- five feet high. It has various different symbols on it. You know, there's gold inlays on it. Uh, you know, picture something like from the Ark of the Covenant. A scene we're talking about Indiana Jones all night long. Uh-huh. Something with those types of designs on it. And behind that, you see uh, what appears to be a figure looking away from you. And it is, uh, you can only see the shoulders up. And he seems to be behind the box. And he's not looking in your direction. But you can see him kind of waving back and forth, right? He's kind of looking around. Looking away from you. Um, what skill would it take to recognize any of these symbols? Uh, it'll take lower. Can I try? Sure. It'll be a D1. <laughs> oh, yes. Ah, I suck. Actually, Actually I did get one success. Well, well, you, yeah, you, you did still, succeed. You did succeed. I just got some doom. Yeah, you just gave him doom. That's all. Uh, you, yeah. you notice that these are symbols of snakes and many symbols of set inlaid along the walls. Um, hey guys, I whisper, this is like a temple of set or something. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. As he did say, this was the area of set. The yeah. other guy. This Asuric was usurped set here, so... We're doing set a favor. Yeah, he owes us one. If we succeed, he'll owe us one. Or she, or just the snake. It, um, I don't know, what's a polite term? I don't want to think about it. it, So what's this person ahead of us? Maybe this is that Asura person. Is it a priest? Or God. No, the God. The, on the head, it seems like he has like a feral style headdress. Uh, you know, on the back of his head. Uh, it has various different colors and, you know, they're bright green and bright yellow and, you know, it almost seems to be kind of shiny. Like it, it's some form of fancy headdress. Hmm. <laughs> What's everyone doing? If someone doesn't decide to do something, I'm going to take a doom. I am going to quietly work my way up. As he has I'm really hurt us. Uh, what, I'm, what kind of armor do you have? Male. Just, male is not quiet. I'm just saying, as somebody who wore it in a LARP in real life, <laughs> you cannot is, sneak in male. There's no version of male that's quiet. Okay, then someone who is quieter. Well, I'm going to tell you, if this is a god, I don't think the fact that he hasn't turned to look at us doesn't mean he doesn't know we're here. I am taking a doom. Can we pretend we're worshippers? <laughs> oh, so I'm <laughs> not, but but Jika's, Jika's going to get frustrated and she's starting to get cranky because she's really thirsty. She's got sand in her hair and sand in other places that she ain't even going to discuss. Alright, so Othwald moves up towards the center of the chamber. What about Adelstan? What's he doing? I'm going to keep up with the rest. As you guys walk and reach the center of the uh, chamber, you hear the sound of uh, grinding as if uh, something is moving. And suddenly you hear three large bangs and the light from the outside is blocked off as three huge blocks fall down and close inside each of the, the, the exits that you just walked through. Sealing you inside. <clears throat> the head and shoulders on the other side of the box 
turns and stares towards you and looks at you. So, who dares enter my presence? A guy got to do to get a drink around this place. Yeah. Fool. <laughs> How dare you make a mockery. And with that, you hear uh, slithering actions and movements. Uh, something that no one really noticed as they walked through. There are several large holes, about eight feet up in this on the walls, roughly the size a foot wide, foot wide holes, <clears throat> and four large snakes slither out. Giant snakes slither out through these holes. Something tells me you already made a mockery of yourself. Just saying. Um, <laughs> uh, guys, this is not good. Uh, so Adelstan is going to pretty much have a shield and bright broadsword right out and ready to go. How far is this guy from us? Oh, just one second there. Sorry, guys. Yep. Take your time. Um, have we got a potion to cure poison by chance? I don't think poison is the biggest problem. If these are constricted, okay. the size of these snakes, kiss yourself goodbye. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah. Uh, I am going to use these tokens here to represent. Are them. are they constrictors? Oh, go up and give one a hug. And find out. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, I hate snakes in real life, so no. <laughs> Although I didn't have a gecko before it died of old gecko age, but geckos are not snakes. They have legs. No, they, they, look, they look, they're just look exactly like a snake with legs. They have I'm legs, not... and they're cute. No, they're not. They look like snakes. No, they they're don't. They're cute in their own little way. They look like snakes with legs. And one, whoop, they're not that big. Holy mackerel, that would be massive. Ah, we're fighting snake kings. And queens. Damned does that. Caught me twice in Dungeon Worlds with the same damn snake in two different games. Like, <laughs> that was funny. <clears throat> okay. So here you go. <clears throat> there are four large snakes. And these snakes, I will describe it to you. These massive serpents are capable of snaring and crushing similar massive prey or even larger. They can swallow whole creatures of surprising size and may survive for months on a single gargantuan meal. These enormous predators are prized among the degenerate cultists and sorcerers as guardians. As few natural cultures or as few natural creatures in the Hyborian age inspire such dread of these giant serpents. <laughs> Looks like my animal handling skills are going to pay off. Um, no. Um, I actually think I have animal handling, but it's not that great. <laughs> I also have animal handling myself. I'm not going to help you, Daniel. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not so, so yeah. sure. <laughs> I'm not sure that snakes help. No, <laughs> the only thing that will help us here is chop off its head. Oh. Now where is this? Where is this god or sorcerer or whatever? Uh, he is up behind Snake Number Two, up in the northern entrance, or the northern chamber or hallway, I should say. 
I'll call oh. it. Oh. Right where that golden circle is. Right there. Great. I'm going to run away in fear. Call to my companions to follow me. And I'm going to charge uh, snake number two. All right. So you were here. So that's that's a minor action to move to where you are. So now you have yep. a standard action that you can take. I will. Can I deliver a steely glare to the snake? You got to get within close range. So you got to get ah. one more ah. to do that. Um. What about my spear? My can I attack it with my spear? You can try to throw it, sure. Oh, I can't. So my spear has a range of three. Yeah, that's your reach of three. So oh. that's uh, when you're in adjacent to people. Okay. You, if you're in the same I guess zone, I don't, I, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I guess I don't understand zone and adjacent. It would have been easier for me to explain it if my hex was working or my grid was working, but it's not working. So. Essentially, reach is only good. Uh, reach is based on hand-to-hand -hand combat when you're adjacent to someone. If you're in the same zone, you're close, but you can only attack people that you are adjacent to. I gotcha. Um, so I, I, but I could use my bow. Oh sure, yeah. Is that the what the weapon that you had ready? Um, yeah, I would. I would have had my spear ready. I, I'm going to stick with my spear. Okay. Uh. I don't know if my command would work in this, but because I'm not trying to command anything, but I'm trying to give a clear battle instruction that um, that perhaps by uh, attacking snake number two, that we can kind of limit being attacked by all the snakes at once. Uh, that's like that's like a, a free action is to yell out a short thing like that. But right. again, it doesn't benefit anyone to for mechanics wise. It doesn't benefit anything. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we were just going to ignore you anyways. <laughs> yeah, now, sure, I get that. If if he's <laughs> run forward, what's the maximum Tika could run forward? And you... just all she wants to do is move as far forward and off slightly to the side as possible. Uh. Okay, so what you're saying is, do you want to move? She just wants to run forward. As she's running, she'll be. She has whip and saber, and it will be preparing both of them. But she wants to move forward. You can as run. Far as she can. You can actually run right up to uh, engage a snake from where you are. <clears throat> but you would have. That's a standard action. So you would have to spend two momentum to make an attack after that. Like it's, it's called a swift action. But then everything is a little harder for you to do. <clears throat> Like, if you just move up to where uh, Petrus is and attack next round, you could do that. But Then that's what I'm going to do, and I and prepare both my whip and my repair. Okay. Going after that one, JC. Okay. Uh, you were there. <laughs> yeah, it's going to get himself killed. <laughs> yeah. It used to be like, oh, wow, you do a skull like star, whatever. So number two has a skull currently. So you were there. I gotta get my thing straightened up again. There is one behind us as well, but I will try and ignore him. But then Alison will have to take care of it. It is a minor action to get directly to that snake, and so you can go ahead and attack if you want. I more than want to. Okay, it's a D one <laughs> to attack it. Uh, he is not going to try and parry it. How come it did that? You got two. You got uh, two successes. No, you got three successes. So that's two momentum. So you get two personal momentum. You can go ahead and roll damage. Now, uh, remember how before when we were spend the momentum to add to damage, it doesn't add extra dice. It just adds extra damage. So for every extra momentum that you spend, adds one damage, not damage I dice. I like it better the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. me too. 
yeah, it was way more fun. I don't remember what they do. And oh. So you got one, two, three, four, five damage. And my battle axe is vicious. <laughs> and vicious does an additional damage for each effect. You didn't roll any effects. What? One and two are in effects? No, it's only five and six are effects. Oh, man. You're no fun. <laughs> what? Why'd you go and change that? I know. I specifically wrote in and asked them to errata it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> it actually takes five vigor damage. That's snake number four. Oh, it's also intense. If any attack causes any wounds, the target suffers one extra. I didn't do enough damage actually wound it. No, you did. You did five. Yeah, sorry. You did five damage, sorry. Which, at five damage, that doesn't get soaked, causes a wound. So you cause one wound. So what does it do? It causes an additional wound. So it takes two. All right. That snake, as you, you describe it, you describe taking it down. You kill it. All right. Well, Othwell just charges up with his... Uh, Battle axe and lets out this primal yell and swings wildly, cleaving through the snake, lopping its head off with one bloody wing. Covering right himself in the snake's blood as it spurts out. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, who wants to go next? Who I'll go next. Got, bitch? All right, I'll stand. You can pretty much do the same. F yeah, you can pretty yeah. much move up and attack this thing if you wanted to. Basically, with my shield up in front of me and my broadsword ready to attack, and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm basically going, that'll come later. Okay, so on your weapon, I should have asked uh, Othwell, but I forgot. Your reach is two. Okay, so it makes no difference. And it makes no difference to you, too, either. Uh... <clears throat> That'll stand. All right. So uh, this thing is going to attempt to... No, you go ahead. It's a D1. So you roll your melee. You got two successes, so you get a momentum. So give yourself a momentum. And this guy here is going to try and parry. So to do that, I have to spend the Doom. And I'm going to roll its parry. So it's 11 and 1. So here we go. And I got two successes. Uh, you got two successes. You win on ties. So you still strike. Roll okay. For, roll for damage. Now, does bonus damage, does, does that already have countered into the broadsword? For you, yes it is, yep. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six damage. And you cause a wound. And its vigor is now five. <clears throat> okay, who wants to go next? Um, I will shoot uh, number three, if I can, from here, I assume. Well, you can move over a tiny bit. If your line goes through a character, it's going to... Uh, it's going like to be that, a D2. Or... Just, just move over a little bit like that, that's all. Okay. All right. That's not water. Uh, that's four. And then range weapons are okay. So you're within. Your bow is. What's your range on your bow? 
Um, what does it say? It says... Oh, range long. So that's range three. So it's... So how do I add a dice after spend a momentum? If you... Yeah, if you... If you want to add dice to your dice skill, you can spend it from the pool. Okay. How do I do that? You just tell me how many you want to spend, and I'll adjust it. Um, I will spend two just to make sure I hit. Okay. So you have to get three successes from where you are to hit. Yep. So do I? how do I add dice to my thing? Uh, now you two. just put uh, two down in your modifier box and roll yep. your dice. Uh, and you miss. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay. And one of them was just wow. one over. Wow. Wow. That, I'm, that gonna say... me off. I'm gonna have I'm gonna... Snake 3 attack Adelstan. I'm, I'm actually going... prepared for it. I'm going to spend Doom to. I'm gonna spend two Doom to add two dice to his attack. So he has to get his skill is eleven M one. So here we go. Uh I got one success. Now, did you want to try and parry that? Oh yeah. Okay, if you want to parry it, it's gonna and you have a sword, you can just you get to do it for free. Oh. <laughs> so don't worry about that. I'll take the the doom doesn't move anywhere. So you have to roll a. Uh, I'm going to spend another doom to make you force you to make a D2 success or make a D2 roll. So you got to get at least two successes on a parry, and you parry the blow, no problem. As I'm doing, I'm like, better luck next time. This giant snake moves up to Petrus, and he's going to spend two doom to try to attack him. Since I only used a minor movement, do I get a counterattack? No. No. That's only if it moves away from you. But he's so got all, all, all. So in this system, all the moves have to be made, have to be declared. Yeah, you can put yourself on hold, right? And for gotcha. certain things. And if you look, uh, if you look at your actions, what you can do for free actions and stuff, it'll like gotcha. you can take. Uh, there's one there called. Uh, there's a reaction actually. Where's the two? Reactions. It's called retaliate, and lashes out. This a reaction may be used when a you an enemy attempts to make a non-attack skill test within reach of your character, or attempts to move out of reach of your character. So moving into it, you can put yourself on hold and say, if this thing moves towards me, I'm going to attack. Now. Seeing you didn't know that, I can certainly say this is the chance to do it. If I get a chance, I will take it. No problem. You can have it. This one time. <laughs> Understood. So I'm going to use those two Doom actually to make it harder for you. So you need three successes to hit it. Now you can spend from the pool, or you can give doom. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working with the spear that I got. I don't think that it's rolling correctly. It's supposed to be 5D piercing, but I must have the code in. Oh, you got to put a comma at the end of it, but you got to roll the hit first. You got to roll the hit first. There you go. Now you got to. No. That's damage again. Yeah, you got to roll the hit now. Yeah, that that yeah, that's all it's doing is rolling damage. Yeah, yeah, you still use your melee that. skill. Oh, 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 I I got gotcha. you. So you got is a D three, 
And you got two successes, so you missed. So now this thing will attack, and I will spend two more Doom to hit, because I'm not taking it easy on you guys for this particular one. Uh -huh. uh, so it's 11 and 1 that I need. So I have five successes. Do you want to choose and parry? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, sorry, it, there's five successes to hit you. Did you want to parry? No. No? No. Okay. So it hits you. Uh, its bite does five damage. Okay, so my... Or five dice damage, so it does a total of three damage to you. I have two armor, right? Yep, so you take one vigor damage. Got it. Uh, snake number one is going to move up and attack to envelop Petrus with its grasp. They like you, Petrus. <laughs> so I'm they gonna, want his money. I'm going to spend two Doom to do that. So again, 11 and 1. I got two successes. Did you want to try and parry? I will not. Okay, so it hits you. And it wraps, wraps around you. This long body wraps around you. <clears throat> it grapples you. <clears throat> and it does. One, two, three, three damage to you again, to your vigor. And you are now grappled. Petrus. I'm seeing the kid grappled like that going, oh, geez. <laughs> so that is the end of this particular round. Uh, who, whoever has momentum can put it into the pool. So who's got more than two momentum stored up? I have two. You have two. Anyone else got momentum? I have only no. one. Okay, that's enough. So everyone delete their momentum to zero. Your pool is full. I've been rolling crappy all night. No momentum. Mm-hmm. And now the kid's all grappled with this big old snake. Oh, jeez. So the momentum gets reset every combat round, too? Yes. In the combat rounds, it goes up at the end of every round. Cool. That would have helped us out a lot. Yes. Before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Wait, what happened to the snake? I so, killed one. Oh, so, wow. so since we're starting over again, can I run over and slash at this snake that's grappling the kid? Jeez. Yeah, you can. You can move over. That's a free action to move to there because you're closer than that. <clears throat> and then I'm trying to remember now for this is... Because he's grappled and he's all entangled, you have to... It's going to be a D2 difficulty for you to hit it. And that's the roll. Uh, Is your melee skill? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to. I don't want to hit him. I'm gonna spend one of the momentum to help out there. Actually, and, uh, I'm gonna stop you right there for a second. I'm gonna move you back to where you were, and I'm going to spend a doom to go first. <clears throat> The figure that was behind the box suddenly rears its head, and you realize it's not a person at all, except it is this. Big snake. Oh, goody. Oh. If it's got water, I'm forgetting the kid. And of course it's not there. Hold on. Yeah, that's why I didn't check for the little fonts of holy water when we came in. That would have been water. 
Oh, it's probably not like the Catholic Church. Um, I'm sure whatever it is, it's totally evil. You realize you that realize the headdress is not a headdress at all, but actually the back of a giant snake-like figure with a human head. It that is... reminds me very much of Dune, actually. <laughs> Everyone must make a fear check. Now, to do a fear check... Uh, where's the two? The creature's uh, form... Okay, when a character sees a creature with fear this, uh, the, cre the character must immediately attempt a discipline check with a difficulty equal to X. So everyone got to make a difficulty 2 discipline check. East JC, why did you Photoshop your face on that? Oh, I know. Well, I was going to use yours, but I didn't want to scare the players away. <laughs> and for Alito much, um, just saying. Definitely oh. for Alito. So Adelstan is good. Maeve is good. Petrus, not so much. Jika, not so much. And Othwell, not so much. Okay, so <clears throat> all you guys suffer a fright of your life. I guess you can say. It suffers its threaten attack. All right, so NPCs. So I just have one question. Okay. Where is the spice? Where what? Where's the, the spice? Uh, Dune <laughs> reference. Just... Come on. No, nobody else read Dune or watched the movie? I haven't yeah. watched Dune in ages or read the book in, like I say, 20 years or more. Well, you, well, you remember what happened to Leto, right? He merged with the sandworms and became like a human sandworm hybrid. <sighs> All I, yeah. The only thing I can remember is, do you have a heart plug? And they pulled a heart plug out on Buddy. Well, that was the, that was the one bad guy, but Leto basically became emperor because he was Paul's son. He he was one of Paul's uh, kids. Well, I didn't go see and, the then, and then he merged with the sandworm because he was trying to. Uh... The whole point of the series was trying to uh, tell people or teach people that they they don't want a dictator, and he was basically a dictator. So yeah. Gotcha. Well. Everyone who failed suffers a fright from the mo mocking visage it sees as the child of Set raises his head over top of the uh, box and lashes out. Holy shit. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven resolve damage. So, if you have courage, subtract your courage from it, and everyone takes seven. Wow. If... if no one can reduce the damage down by to five or to less than five. You also take a trauma. Mine's reduced to less than five. So where do I add a trauma? Uh, down in your character sheet there under uh, where it says trauma in where it says spell three and spell four and all that. Just go down to a four. That's all. So if we don't reduce it, we take the trauma damage. That's right. You plus take your resolve yeah. damage as well, but. If it's yeah, five or more, that. that's right, yeah. So this is a child of set. Yeah, so it obviously gives you a pretty big, sh uh, sh sh you know, fright. <clears throat> Apparently, I've seen much worse. You have, <clears throat> and this creature uh, rears its up its head and moves out towards. Chikika. 
Now, guys, unfortunately, this is where I'm going to have to end it for the night. Oh, man, I want a cliffhanger to end it up. <laughs> you got one bloody dead snake right off the get-go. I wasn't expecting that. And now we're going to take the pounding. <laughs> yep. You got one guy grappled. Enveloped. Uh, we got this. Uh, nothing to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to read up on how bad this damage is this week. I got the book now. A anybody have like a chain lightning spell or something? <laughs> Nobody well, actually... No one took the, the sorcerer. No one took the, the, the you know, the, the magic user of the group. Well, I just keep taking the same dude, so... Because Wasn't I'm too lazy to make one. In the in the FG days game, yep. didn't Ryan's play Oswald? Uh, I think so. Yep. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Yep. We need to get that Roman game done again too. He's still sitting in a Roman jail cell. <laughs> Been for since last summer. Yeah, so I'm going to end it there with uh, the child is set reaching out. Uh, but I will say this. Uh, I'm going to make everybody roll a lore check. So D1 lore check. The doom doesn't matter right now. Okay. Not even close. <laughs> I would have given you a doom right there. <laughs> you would have. <laughs> Uh, Maeve? Yes. And the only one left to roll now is, uh, <clears throat> Petrus as he's being all entangled. He's probably a little bit too busy. <laughs> it could be. Uh, See, Maeve... my problem is I'm not on horseback. I could win this if I was on horseback. I'm going to send you a, a message there, uh, Maeve, and you can, it's up to you if you want to uh, relay that information. And I'll tell Petrus too. Uh, the face looks like Petrus's father, the caravan mask. <laughs> what? Petrus, I am not your father. <laughs> oh, maybe if we just throw Petrus to him, then he'll let us live. We've all been real quick to... Sorry, but we've all been real quick to you know, sacrifice Petrus right from the beginning here. Uh, guys, um, we're... Uh... We're fighting creatures from the god of Set. I don't know why. Why are we fighting these guys? I mean, they did attack us technically, but uh... because we need to get that diamond, that diamond cloud thing to take back to give Reeslees the other from the temple. Um, yeah, they may be of Set, but they may not belong to Set right now. He said yeah. that in the battle between Set and when the city was destroyed, the that some of the Set's disciples, etc., had been he gained control of them, whether it be a, via some kind of mind control or power or whatever. So these could be those creatures. Yes, and it could be that you know killing him releases them. Fair enough. I just don't want to like fight things I don't have to, you know, that we don't want to fight this really. Although it is self defense in this particular case. Yep. If we don't fight, we ain't getting out of here alive. Well, yeah. Like I say, it's self defense. We're not going to get alive anyways. Who are you kidding? <laughs> how, how do we know that? Um... Sure, you're almost out now. Almost. Well, it depends on the GM. I mean, maybe he wants to make us all zombies. You never know. 
Well, anyway. Well, he's got it out for me, so. I do not. I don't know why you say that. <laughs> you know, just because you're a Maple Leafs fan doesn't mean everybody's out to get you. <laughs> All those wannabe Newfoundlanders, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm from Minnesota, so. Yeah, we don't hold that against you either. Don't worry. I'm just saying, I don't care about sports, uh, much less uh, Minnesotan sports. So. Hell, I'm, a, I'm from Washington State. From all the, the Vikings are not known for their prowess. I'm from all over the world. I'm from my own little planet. Welcome to Nerd Prom. <laughs> The world's going to be evolving now. No matter where in like the world you are, we're all nerds! Yeah, international. <laughs> see, you guys see and did With this the hyphen. Everybody does that. First of all, the numero uno mistake is thinking Michigan, Detroit. No. The whole freaking couple of peninsulas out behind Detroit that are really super cool. Then there's some other...